Hello friends, this is Rupesh and watching C Minutes video series on C++ and today's topic is size underscore t data type in C and C++. So yes, it is there in C and C++ both. And I'm pushing this video today because this is a really very small video. Actually, I promise that I'll be pushing either new and delete operator overloading video or virtual function video, but they are very big and I don't have time for that. So maybe tomorrow or the next day, you'll get that, okay? Actually, I went out and couldn't get back on time. So this is the reason for that. So, so let's discuss about this one. You might have seen this size underscore T data type in C and C++ more often here and there, but what it is. So we'll discuss the size of T with these points. So let's look at the first point now. It is used to represent size of objects or variables in bytes. So remember this, it is in bytes. So if you're calculating size of your object or variable the return type is size underscore t that's the second point size of returns this data type only okay so size of will calculate the size of whatever the object or variable is or the data type is and it will give in the form of this size underscore t and yeah this size of is not a function don't confuse with this returns word. And the third point is it guarantees to be a big enough to contain the size of a biggest object that system can handle. This is really very important. And this is the mainly, I guess, the only reason we go for size in that code T. Let me read this again. It guarantees to be the big enough to contain the size of a biggest object that system can handle. So, if your compiler is 32-bit compiler, it means if you have compiled your program on 32-bit system, it is type def of unsigned integer. And you know how to use type def, right? We'll simply write type def and then unsigned integer and this size underscore t. And if it is 64-bit, I mean, if your compiler is 64-bit, it is type def of unsigned long long. And this is the biggest size your memory can handle in 64-bit and this one is the biggest size your memory can handle in 32-bit. Fourth point is it does not work on negative. Okay. It is never negative. See, it is unsigned in all the cases. So if you are assigning a non-negative value inside size of t, it is okay. But if you are initializing negative value inside that, that is undefined behavior. Your system can crash. You can have so many troubles. And these are the examples I wanted to show you that some implicit functions, not some, actually so many, I have just taken three examples just to demonstrate that. When you pass something in malloc or in new, new also take size underscore t type only. So if you write something like new integer is equal to integer x, then this new is calculating the size of this one and this should be pointer and returning that much size to this x but how it is calculating this size. So this new is actually the function. It will calculate this size here and pass this size into this new function. And this new function is somewhere in the system. I will give you the video for that. Don't worry. That would look something like this. If you have new, then we have this size underscore T and number. So this new is calling this new function. I know this is not the actual syntax for new operator but the idea is it is just passing this size underscore t or to say it is taking the type size into this data type and similarly malloc also does the same thing and here if you'll see mam copy which takes whatever is there at source location will be copied at the destination location but it asks you what is the number how much you want to copy from source to destination so you give some number here right so that number is also positive number. That's why it's data type is always size underscore T. And similarly, you have this str len function, which will take this data type and return what is the length of the string. And that data type, I mean, the, that return data type is also size underscore T. So you can see that whenever your system is playing with the size or number, see, this is number, okay? This is the count, okay? And this is also the count, but it is giving with size underscore t not some integer or long or something because this guarantees one thing it guarantees that it will hold the biggest object that system can handle so you cannot return 
more than what your system can handle. So it's very obvious that you should use size underscore t in those situations. Okay. So to give you an example, let me just try this. We have one function like suppose it is a print function. It's a very simple thing. We have this while and we have this count. Okay. And this count is coming from here. So it is size underscore t and this is count. And we just want to print something like uh, what could be that CPP nuts. Okay, then that's it. I'll tell you why I'm writing this. So first, let me write this. It is 10. And wait a minute, this is not correct. This would be minus and minus. And let's compile this. So it has printed 10 times CPP nuts. There is no magic in that. Okay, so we got this CPP nut 10 times. Now the point is, I was playing with the size and I don't wanted this size to be negative because I don't want to print something minus five times or something. It doesn't make any sense. And if you are sure that it will never be minus, then you should use size underscore t as your data type as these function does, okay? I know this was not the great example, but it explained pretty well that what we wanted to achieve, okay? So if there is something like count or number or something, then you should go for size underscore t if you are sure that it will never be negative. So let's just sit. I think we are done with this video. And if you have any doubt, please comment and don't forget to hit the like button, dude. It will help me a lot. And make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you can get the notification for upcoming videos like this. Bye bye.